All right, springtime's here and the yellow jackets are starting to come out. Got a couple different types of traps that I've heard about from my neighbors that I'm gonna make and see how well they work. We got the first one going today. We gotta get some supplies for the second one, so that'll be another video. Hang out for a minute. The first trap, we need to make some circles. I don't have a saw, like a band saw, that's gonna cut circles. So we're gonna use this chop saw and do the best we can. All right, so what we've got here, we're gonna make a circle. Easiest way to do that, get a piece of string, put a nail in the middle, and run your pencil around. At least it's easiest way I've found. We'll do this with all six of these pieces. So all the same circle. I'm gonna cut a, a tangent here, as I'm told. Tangent. It's a line that touches the edge of the circle. Touches the edge of the circle. Does not cross it. But does not cross it. And nobody is telling me to say this. Are you telling me nobody? <laughs> that is my word for the day. Tangent. Tangent. The tricky part is to cut all this out with a straight saw. Well, that's not too bad. We can take some, uh, maybe a wood rasp and go around the edges to make it perfect if we wanted. No. We'll do that five more times and start doing other things. So the next step in making this yellow jacket trap is drilling holes in each one of these circular pieces right in the middle. But one of these, this is two traps, six, six circles is gonna make two traps. And one of these in each trap is gonna need this plastic cup to sit right in it. So find yourself a hole saw that's the same size as a plastic cup you're gonna use. That one's pretty good right there. So that's what we're gonna do. Get these all drilled out with this hole saw. The center's already marked from your nail with your string. We got a perfect starting point. So we've got all our holes cut on the hole saw and all these pieces for the two traps. We cut off some little post pieces to kind of support the top to bottom. And we've got wire mesh. This is basic screen material that you'll find at Home Depot or Lowe's, but it's not the cheap stuff, it's the actual wire mesh stuff. A little bit more expensive, but it'll last way longer. So this particular circle is I think 31 inches in circumference. So we place one of these every 10 inches so that it'll wrap back around and meet up with this. Let me just let me hammer. You hold the nail. Yeah. I'm completely joking. I'm not gonna, really? All right. Let it started. So you've got it stapled together at this point. It's a little wavy in some spots. It's not a big deal. And it's universal, a hole at both ends. 
it's all the same. Next thing you want to do is make a cone out of the same mesh and make that cone so that it fits down in that hole. And you want it to go as tall as far up here as you can because it's going to sit like this. The bees are going to come up through that cone and they're going to fill this area. So the higher you got the cone at the top, the more bees are going to fit. Or not bees, but yellow jackets. You shouldn't trap bees. Bees are actually good. So I think what I'm going to do next is straighten this out. I'm going to cut little slits down, trim some of the excess off, and staple this mesh to here. You got it all stapled in. Cone goes up pretty tall. I don't know if you can see it in the film or not, but my fingers are at the top of the cone. So the bees will or the yellow jackets will fill all the way up to the top of that before they can really figure out how to get back out. Next, we need to make a, a base with a cup that's going to sit underneath here for the bait. That's where this is going to come in and our little plastic cups wherever they flew off to in the wind. We're going to use these little blocks, just pieces of this wood as spacers. Oh, there we go. There's a cup. The cup, since this whole thing is upside down right now, the cup's going to sit in here. But these spacers are going to go in this to make the space where the bees can go in. This will all make a little bit more sense when it's turned right side up. But let me get these spacers and this bottom piece on here, and we'll be good to go. So there's your basic trap right there. Your cup with your bait. This is the way the, the yellow jackets fly in. They go down into the cup to get the bait and they fly straight up into the cone and come up and get trapped up in here. The only other thing we have to do is get a block of wood to cover this hole. This hole is where you're gonna open it to empty it out, say the end of, end of summer when all the yellow jackets are dying off. You'll go out, have a couple screws holding this cap on, take the screws off, shake all the yellow jackets out. You've got a new trap ready to go for next year. And a way to hang it. And a way to hang it. That's pretty much it. I'll make that top cap. We'll put a little, little hook in it. How are you going to get the bait in the cup? The bait in the cup? Yeah. You can't get the cup out, right? No, the cup doesn't come out. So how do you get the food in there? You just throw it in there. A bazooka. Uh, <laughs> um, what I thought about using to put the bait in the cup was a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, the yellow jackets around here seem to like chicken, so you get a little bit of chicken, use your needle nose pliers to drop it in the cup. That's pretty much it. They're going to go for the bait because they love it. It's got our top plate on there, a little cap for that hole. I drilled pilot holes. For all these so it wouldn't split the, the cap or this top piece and I drilled a couple pilot holes right there in the middle for that piece of wire to go through. Just take that piece of wire, hook it up around a branch, kind of twist it around and hold it real good. And that's it. We'll put some bait in this thing, get it hung up in a tree somewhere, see if we can catch some of these wasps before they uh, get out of control. Alrighty, it's all baited up and ready to go. Hopefully we catch some of these things when they come out of hibernation, catch them right away so they don't have a chance to build really big nests like they did last year. I placed this one out in the trees, away from any construction zone on our property. That way we're attracting the yellow jackets and the wasps and the bald paced hornets or whatever else is gonna be caught in this trap is it's gonna be attracted away from those areas. So hopefully it works all right. We'll come out here in a couple weeks and check on it, see how it's doing. Until next time guys, go make something. Look. Yeah, still a scar. Still yeah. a scar. Scarred for life, honey. Right See on. that thing. See that yellow jacket. There's the yellow jacket scar. There's the hot glue gun scar. I see the hot glue gun too. Scarred for life. It's on your finger. You can't hide it. What do I call those? These, the wooden pieces. Posts. That's some posts. Yeah. All right.